Chambers! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, I am Kaplan America. Travel back in time with me and step inside to see the big boar two-stroke monsters. Look, from sea to shining sea, this is the only one of its kind. Inside, over 300 horse and six foot of suspension. Step up to see high-flying, death-defying, bone-crushing beasts. The most rootin' tootin'. Ring ding, the king of ping, the rip roaring, rock roosting, sand blasting, rip your house off the foundation CR 500s. Today, we go fifth year tap through the grass fields and we travel to the number one dirt track in the world, the sandbox, the wick, MX338. The hallowed grounds of third gear starts and fourth gear buckley burn bashing. Today, we give the people what they want. These are the good old days.
by far the smoothest motor. Okay, uh, the main reason we're doing this today is we're trying out all the different configurations of the 500 to see what the differences are. I'll tell you, this 86, this is a Ken O'Connor racing crank that was micro-balanced. He sent out the crank works, had it micro-balanced, and um, it's got a Wiseco 91 millimeter. So this is a 514. This is the biggest bore. This one vibrates the less because of the micro-balanced crank. Um, the 97 also felt really good to me. Um, the 
89 Kenny's bike, we got an obscene amount of money into it, but uh, I think we put the wrong crank in that. We put a hot rod crank. I think that one vibrates a little bit more with the hot rod crank, correct? Would you agree? Yeah, well, let me put my two cents in. Going down the line, the 97, this, this I feel like, I feel more comfortable in the steel chassis. It's riding higher. Um, the, the, the AF is phenomenal in the corners, and the brakes are probably the best in the AF, but this is probably the best uh, feel. And the um, suspension. The suspension is really uh, good. Yeah, all, all, the suspension. Actually, I prefer the Olins on the 89, but this motor in the 86, is, is the, it vibrates the least. It pulls strong. For some reason, I don't think it's as fast as the 97 here. I was I was walking you for sure. Well, I, I missed a couple. The second time through, I missed a gear. I totally screwed up the start. Okay, so, 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 so it's, it's probably about the same. Yeah. Um, I think I, it's actually faster. The, the 89 is... Equal to this one. Yeah, Which the, one? This one. That one? I think that runs a little cleaner. On that I, one? When you when you took off, I stayed with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, hey, on that one. Yeah, yeah. It's not bad. that's got Pretty a good fast. motor too. Yeah. Pretty fast. Uh, I think the Olins. I don't think you have enough rebound dampening cranked in the rear shock. I, I think it needs solid. a little more rebound. I, I, dude, Owens it feels really amazing. I don't know what suspension. you're talking about. You well, no, I, I think I would think it would adjust it a little bit for my liking, uh, uh, but it felt really good. Yeah, uh, the forks got a little squirrely on me on the Olins coming down the straightaway really fast. It did a little dance on me. I don't know why. Oh, that's because we got them all the way up. Yeah, we slid them up. I did get a little dance and I got a little uh, a panic arm pump from it, but so in your opinion, uh, motor wise, let's just focus on the motors. I feel like this is the micro balance crank and the big bore wise on this is, a, is the best comp. The 80, combo. This 86 has a phenomenal motor. It, 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 it it's the smoothest power yep. that I felt on one. I you know it, it's uh, um, 100 percent. The 97 I would put at a at a close second. It vibrates a little bit more. The 89, I almost prefer. It, it feels, if I'm not sure if it's because of the vibration, but the 89 feels viciously fast. Yeah, but is it it's not, it's not, it's not vibration free like the 86, um, and uh, it's probably a third after the the, the, the 86 the, I, really stands I, up. I can tell you this on the 500s, the pipe makes a big difference. I went from a stock pipe in 87. I remember I put the FMF on it, and it had a lot more low end torque. So the stock, the, the pipes make a difference, and jetting makes a big difference as far as the uh, vibration of the bike. The jetting can make a difference too. Um, the AF. Uh, that's got the oldest engine, the 85, and the newest chassis, which is kind of a, a, a cool combination. It's a big bore, 508. Um, we're thinking about putting the motor from the 86 because this is a micro-balanced big bore in the in the in that. Do you still agree that's what I, we should do? I, that was my favorite. I think the aluminum frame is my favorite. Well, why? Just because of the chassis. Yeah. Just because of the chassis and the brakes. All right, hey, take the mic. Everybody yeah. give their two cents and pass. Has everybody got a chance to ride all the bikes? Uh, it's, it's a hard toss-up. I'm going to say it's either the 86 or the 87. I really like Ken's 97 a lot. It seemed really refined yeah, just because it's the most yeah. it's the most modern-ish motor. You could um, probably ride that one longer. If I had to pick my favorite, I think I'm going to say the 87, though, really? and then the 86, and then the aluminum frame. Yeah. But I liked I liked Ken's 97, so Ken's 97 is probably tied with the aluminum frame, too. I, but I liked, I liked the older bikes. I don't know. Really? The motors are really really good on both of them. Well, I noticed the brakes weren't what they were on that, on that one. The brakes were incredible. Huh? What do you think? <clears throat> Um, see, I'm gonna have to agree with Shane on the 87. It felt really refined. Yeah, I thought the 87 felt really good. It handled nice. Um, like when we were over out back by the solar panel and we were doing those little, little bumps, that it felt amazing on that compared to the AF. The AF, I on the straightaways, I, I kept getting like what Ken was getting a little squirrely. I don't know why. Maybe the uh. Triple clamp nuts a little loose, but uh, yeah, I gotta go with the 87. Although I have rode the 86 and that was nuts. Setting can make a difference too. Uh, oh my gosh. Bottom line is they're badass, man. <laughs> Thanks for watching and God bless America. What's up guys, we're out at the WIC MX338, been training with Chris Canning all day, rode the 89 earlier, now I'm on the 97 Seniors CR500, gonna spin two laps, the track is absolutely nasty right now, um, really rough, we're gonna see what, what the old CR500 can do in the deep sand.
What's up, guys? We got a special day planned for you today. We're going to be riding at the compound. Then we're taking it. You asked for it. We're bringing it there. We're going to Southwick. We're bringing the bikes to the Sandy Berms and long straightaways of Southwick, the MX338, the WIC. But before we go, we're going to talk about the history of the 500s. I've been riding these since 1986. In my opinion, one of the, the best. This is like the LS7 big block Chevelle. It's like the uh, 454 big block. It's the Hemi Cuda of motorcycles. First year of the big bore two-stroke liquid-cooled Honda CR500 was 1985. Today we've got the 86, the 87, the 88, the 89, a 97, and also the newest generation, the aluminum frame CR500 AF by Service Honda. But before we get into that bad boy, we'll start with the 86 right here. 85 uh, was a huge huge improvement from the air cool bike the year before everything was improved on it uh this bike the 86 the major differences between the 85 and the 86 is the 86 had the goal rims and it had the cartridge forks on it um i'm not going to talk about graphic changes because they ran basically the same motor for the majority of the life cycle of the 500 but the 85 to 86 the major changes were these cartridge forks and they ran these 86 87 and 88 is that correct wizard Gold wheels and, and the inverted forks. That was the first year for gold wheels. Yeah. <clears throat> Moving over to the 87 here, the, uh, the major difference on the 87 is this one had the disc rear brake. And there was one other change, right? Yeah, the, uh, the safety seat. The seat safety seat. Higher. This would save your nuts from safe. getting crashed. Um, yep, yeah, this, so you had this, the safety seat, you had the disc rear brake. Now, to look at this seat compared to this one right here. See how this one on the 85 and 86 only go to here? So the 87 gas tank looks a, a lot, a little bit more modern, and it's got the seat going uh, up higher. The biggest difference on the 87 was they went to a long rod. Uh, uh, the crank had a longer rod, so uh, that's been a mod that a lot of people would do to the 85, 86 to smoothen out the power a little bit and make it a little easier to ride fast. The horsepower was about the same. Some people say they were detuned. I just think they were easier to ride. So you had the, the long rod. Other than that, the motors are pretty much the same. It does have the disc rear brake, and they also went to a, uh, a uh, safety seat, we'll call it, that kept your uh, self safe if you had bashed your balls on the tank like you might on this one right here. So the 86 seat, you can see is shorter. The 87 seat is longer. The gas tank's a little bit different. The shrouds are a little different, and it's got the disc rear brake. Is that the major differences? Yeah, and this is the last year for gold wheels. Last year for gold wheels. And more sleeker side panels also. Okay, stepping yeah. up to the 89, 88. 88, excuse me, 86, 87, 88. Uh, this one here is not a good rep representation of an 88 because it has the upside down forks. That was a common modification. They put modern, these are modern forks on an 88 frame. What were the major differences of the 88 wizard? The 88 just pretty much the color change going to blood red. Oh yeah, we, we weren't gonna really, so was, really the 87 and 88 we're, were the gonna same, talk right? about it, but that is the only real same thing. So the big revision was 89. This was really the first modern looking CR500 where today, even on a track, it doesn't look totally out of place. Uh, it has a um, low boy pipe, uh, which you can see from this side over here. Yeah. And it also has the, the major thing is the forks, the, the inverted, as Carl would say, or upside down forks, uh, get, yeah. Yeah. which is something that, and they, they were known to be like the worst set of inverted forks Honda ever made. So um, these have been upgraded with the Olin's forks. Obviously this is Junior's race bike. Um, this one's highly modified, but the major differences are the Kickstarter, the low boy pipe, the different tank, the different shrouds, the seat's a little flatter. If you stand back and look at the 88 compared to this 89, it looks more like a modern bike. It's more of a, a smooth transition, correct? Yep, more of a modern bike. <clears throat> so we go from the 89 all the way up to a 97, and really nothing changed in that se seven or eight year period except for a little bit of cosmetics, the, the airbox and the shroud. Is that correct? Airbox, yeah, airbox and uh, su the subframe. And the subframe yeah. also. Uh, if you look back, uh, all the way to the 88 you can see the subframe has a banana shape in it that, go point to the sh subframe please because not everybody knows what that is uh, that that bar right there has a banana shape to it and if you step back and look at this 89 here you can see that's more of a straight frame so th this 97 uh appears to be it's it's modified uh, but um most of the modifications are internal uh, what were the, what were the other mods on on the, the 97 was there anything else airbox airbox, airbox. subframe Yep, like side panels. Yeah, we already mentioned the airbox, airbox, subframe, the seat, side panels, the seat is also and the seat. Other than that, same low boy pipe. So then 
They stopped making these in 01. They made it from 1985 to 2001, and really the engines were all pretty close. I'd say within uh, you know five, ten percent. From what year on? From 85 to 2001, they're pretty much the same. The the, ma the major difference was uh, tuning, the, the suspension, um, the brakes, bold new graphics every year. But really, it was one of the most unchanged motocross bikes Honda made uh, through that 15-year period, largely because they were so good. The motors were awesome right from the beginning. They won multiple New England championships, uh, NESC championships, AMA championships, World Grand Prix off-road races, Baja races. They've won so many different types very of... Versatile bike. Yeah, very versatile motor. So here we have what is the, the last and still made today by, if you go to built500.com, I encourage you to check it out. AJ Wagoner is, I'll call him the godfather of the CR500. I'll call AJ the guru. Him and Adam Millar, I feel, are the two principals in the 500 uh, resurrection or uh, ongoing saga of the 500s. They're taking brand new 2020 and 2019 Honda CRF four four stroke frames and turning them into vintage two strokes. Now, this one here was built by AJ Wagner. This is my personal ride. I call this my my um, uh, Patriot Dirt Missile. It's my Kaplan America bike. This one right here is a 2003. This was AJ Wagoner's personal bike. This was a 2003 CR125 two-stroke frame, and it has a 1985 CR500 motor in it currently, although we're building a high-performance 86 that we're going to be putting in it. This is pretty much a stock 85. The 85 was considered to be the most abrupt and violent of all of the 500s, the most powerful and aggressive. They, they, and so that's why I put it in here. They, they, they tuned them down a little bit, but basically you have modern frame modern technology modern geometry the suspension can be modified uh, there's still people working on this suspension twin so chamber twin chamber forks so also um aj wagoner and adam millar a aj built these with a a, a a brand new a brand new uh crf frame with a brand new uh two-stroke motor if you go on built 500 and we are actually sending a motor to AJ, we're gonna send a 1992 motor. He makes billet aluminum cases, billet cranks that are balanced to perfection with a Wozner rod, uh, a CR500 cylinder that he ports, and then they put a special pipe and carb on it and it makes it a bulletproof CR500. And that's built500.com. The service Honda company no longer exists. They're being built under the built 500. Um, name now. This was a David Bailey replica that we customized and turned it into Kaplan America bike. Yep. Yeah. When AJ owned it, it was a Kaplan America bike. Yep. And Ken designed it. Actually, Ken designed it and Christy designed all the graphics. If you if you if you've been if you've been following it us online, you know that uh, Christy spent about 14 hours designing these graphics. Why did it take so long to do it? Because I don't think people understand. You didn't, you didn't just cut and paste this together, right? Um, it was the first time I've done them, so <laughs> it was. Uh, having to set up everything from scratch. Now that I have these graphics made, uh, like the ones, the USA's, Kaplan America's, the Honda, the 500, all of that is all done now. So now I can just stick it onto other oh, plates and, and set well, them up. But well, this was one, the initial setup. But there's one thing you left out. You had you actually drew these wings. You, these weren't cut and paste. You had digitally drew those, right? Yes, they had to be digitally drawn. And that's where all the time is. But once you draw them, you don't have to draw them again. And I had to do left and right. So, so, so you could reproduce them in short order now. Oh, but. yeah. Now it's copy and paste. It's all set. So there you have it, folks. Uh, there's the history of the Honda CR500. Uh, my biggest regret is not keeping one of these in the stable. I ended up working for a Suzuki dealer and riding Suzuki after that and switched to the four strokes. But hindsight being 2020, if I could have stayed on these for my whole motocross career, I would have. And now when you ride a vintage two stroke, like one of these steel frames, you're kind of, uh, you catch everybody's eye. Like uh, who, uh, who's, who's that dude that, who rode the nationals on a two stroke? What was it? Um, Stank Dog. Stank Dog, oh, yeah. Stank. Stank Dog. He was in 20th place in the nationals on a 125 in the 250 class and everybody's rooting for him because he's kind of the underdog. And Kenny, bought his KX500 to Winchester, and he had more people around the trailer last weekend oh, yeah. than he had. What do you attribute that to, Kenny? Vintage two-strokes. You don't see them out on the track. For, well, sort of for a reason. Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah the, I mean, let's face it. The, a new 454 strokes easier to go faster on, but anybody can buy one of those. But to take a 30-year-old 500 and master these, these beasts. Uh, we have a couple other bikes I want to show you. Uh, this is a CR500 that uh, my good friend Captain John Greer 
uh, who moved here from California, has been building. John, what year is this one? This is a, uh, a 1989 CR500. It's an 89 CR500, and... Uh, He's got some, I guess the cat's out of the bag. We were on Discovery the other night, so they put the Discovery Channel thing on there. Uh, we were on Diesel Brothers. They interviewed Junior and I about an upcoming show we have that's going to be on Discovery in the fall. Um, the uh, John did a beautiful job on this. The seat cover is something special, too. Uh, tell us about the seat cover. I know that costs you a bundle. Uh, absolutely, yeah. I believe that was a blue pigskin uh, suede leather on top, and then I uh, had a local car upholster here do up a... Uh, Marine vinyl and the red, white, and blue scheme that we love so much. It, it's beautiful. This is 89, you said? 89. Just stunning. You did a beautiful job on it. Thank you so much. Really, really nice. Can't, what are you doing for the motor on this? Who's building your motor? Uh, Pro X, or I'm sorry, X Pro, uh, local shop. Gave the, the work for them. They're doing an awesome job getting that thing together. It's going to have a uh, polished cases, uh, blue head on there, so it should look real nice when it's done. I like this. Uh, put God first and you'll never be last. Absolutely. Uh, definitely. Uh, fourth of july spirit about this bike here and uh the dunlop tires painted so red rims just just beautiful everything on it a lot of nice attention to detail can't wait to see the motor done i'm sure that's going to be just as beautiful that's it folks stay tuned we're heading to rip these 500s right now which is what you've been waiting for all along anyways and then we're heading to the wake